In this video, I'm explaining the process of linearizing around a fixed point. That's a process that we do when we want, want to understand the behavior of the dynamics, the behavior of the vector field close to a fixed point. That allows us to classify fixed points. So we're doing this to zoom in on behavior very close to the fixed point. And my first step is to use a coordinate shift. The fixed point might be, I don't know, over at 3, 3 or 7, 1. And I'm just going to use a coordinate shift so that the fixed point moves to the origin. That way, all my analyses are done around the origin, and I'm close to my fixed point when my coordinate is small. So in a 1D system, we defined a new coordinate, eta, that was equal to x, our old coordinate, minus x star, the location of the fixed point. So this coordinate is telling us it's a signed distance from the fixed point. When we're right at the fixed point, it's zero. That's what I mean by using a coordinate shift so the fixed point moves to the origin. And when we're close to the fixed point, it's small. In 2D, I do the same thing, but my fixed point has two coordinates. So I need to create two new coordinates to do this shift. And I'm just going to name them u, which is the shifted x, and v, which is the shifted y. In general, in n dimensions, I can use vector notation to say all of the components of my coordinates are getting shifted to the fixed point. So doing this shift, as I said, makes close to the fixed point correspond to small values in our new variables. My next step is going to be to rewrite the dynamical system using my new coordinates. So eta was equal to x minus x star. That means x is equal to eta plus x star. So if my old system was x dot equals f of x, I have to figure out what x dot becomes in my new coordinates. And so x dot actually becomes eta dot, because this was a constant, its derivative is 0. And f of x becomes f of eta plus x star. So my new system is eta dot equals f of eta plus x star. In 2D, I can do this as well. So changing my coordinates around, x is u plus x star, y is v plus y star, x dot is u dot, y dot is v dot, and x dot was f of x comma y, y dot was g of x comma y, so u dot is f of u plus x star comma v plus x star, v dot is g of u plus x star y star. I um, can also do this in n dimensions. There, x dot will be u dot, and it will be, instead of f, of f vector of x vector, it will be f vector of u plus x star. The system is written in the new coordinates, but otherwise has not changed. All that I've done is a coordinate shift on this system. I haven't distorted the system or changed anything else about the system. My next step is to actually do the linearization. This allows me to zoom in on the origin and understand the vector field very close to the origin, which is my fixed point. To do that, I'll keep the leading terms of the Taylor expansion. In 1D, my Taylor expansion about the origin so about u equals 0, is f evaluated at u equals 0 plus the f dx evaluated at u equals 0 times u. And that kind of linear approximation is something you hopefully remember from uh, your calculus course. We know that f of x star is f evaluated at the fixed point, and we know that the vector field is identically zero at the fixed point, so we know that this is zero. So this term goes away, and um, only, when, only when we're at a fixed point. And so eta dot is equal to f prime evaluated at x star times eta. This is a linear first order differential equation. And we completely understand the behavior of solutions to this system. Solutions to this system grow exponentially, or they decay exponentially. Or if f is 0, then this system is extreme. F prime, if f prime is 0, this system is extremely boring. Now let's do d. In 2d, 
our Taylor expansion has extra terms, our linearization has extra terms, so we still evaluate the function at the fixed point. And then we take the variation of f with respect to x at that fixed point and multiply by u, then we take the variation of f with respect to y multiplied by v, and we do the same thing for v dot, um, it's g evaluated at uv equals zero, zero, which ends up being g evaluated at the fixed point, and then g sub x times u plus g sub y times v. So these are the linear approximations to the functions when we're in 2D, when we have two variables. Again, at uv equals zero, zero, we're right at the fixed point, and f at that point is zero, and g at that point is zero. And so we're able to simplify this expression to include only these first derivative terms. So we have u dot is f sub x times u plus f sub y times v. v dot is g sub x times u plus g sub y times v. And we can rewrite this in a matrix form. So rewriting this using our matrix notation, d dt of u v is equal to f sub x f sub y, u v, g sub x, g sub y, u v. These are all evaluated at x star, y star, but I ran out of space to write that in. In general, this object is referred to as the Jacobian and is sometimes denoted capital D of the vector f, where the vector f incorporates all of our equations evaluated at, um, at the fixed point. Here's where we land after the process of linearization. So here's what we get in 1D. Eta dot is equal to some constant. That constant's given by the derivative of the vector field evaluated at the fixed point with respect to, to position multiplied by eta. In 2D, that derivative gets a little bit more complicated. It's still evaluated at the fixed point, and now it has four components. And in ND, it's actually going to be um, an N by, by N matrix. Once we're at this point, we, like it's important to know how to get here, but what we actually end up looking at is specifically F prime of X star in a 1D system. That's what tells us about the stability of the fixed point. If this sign is positive, we know that solutions are exponentially growing. If this sign is negative, we know that solutions are exponentially decaying. In 2D, once we get to this point, what we care about is this matrix. This is the matrix that's going to allow us to determine what type of fixed point we have based on the behavior of this linear system. And in ND, we'll care about this matrix. So this entire process, the goal of it, was to show that this is the matrix that we care about. For This is the matrix that we're going to end up analyzing. And once we know its eigenvalues, will understand exactly what type of fixed point we have based on this linearization, based on knowing what happens in the linear system, because we made this linear system by zooming in very closely on the fixed point in our original nonlinear system.